Hey everybody, another quick update about the portfolio because I copied someone new and just wanted to talk about it a little bit. So I've added more money. You can see now I'm only down to $195 in my cash available. I've added it to the other guys. So you can see Ami Cup. I've bumped him up to 800 net invested because he's been doing really well. So I wanted him to equal the other ones basically. So that's still in alignment. It's realigning there. Um, Celestina's 800. All these are 800. I've bumped Swiss way up to 600. It was in alignment and it finished that process really quickly. Fund Manager Zek, I returned... Uh, some of the money I'd taken out, he's at $1.72 profit and four fifty dollars in fees profit. So that's like, I don't know, five, $6.22, I think. My profit overall is up from the last one. They're doing well, thank God. Um, so Fund Managers X also in alignment. Autobus uh, is at the moment the same and I've added this guy, Thomas JP. Autobus just released like a, a strange update. Autobus 23 minutes ago just deposited, just deposited additional 745% of his money. I think, I think, this is a guess unless this is a mistake. It's asking me to add 3,000 extra dollars to copy for the optimal results. I'll wait for the realignment to happen or whatever. I'll add $10, force a realignment. I don't know, I'll see what happens. I think what he's doing here, um, when you want to move up to the next uh, stage of the popular investor program, if we look at Kresmir, he's on the uh, red star. He probably has to go up to the green star next, and then eventually, hopefully for him, the black star. Uh, you have to have a certain amount of money in your account as a popular investor, a certain amount of your own skin in the game, uh, to be eligible to move up to that next tier. So what he might be doing, I do not know if this is true, but my guess is that he might be adding that extra money over here uh, in preparation for going up to the next tier. Because obviously he is doing well. If we look at his sort of stats, we can see that he's got a lot of copiers. He's probably uh, 300,000 to 1 million uh, assets under management. Only 172 copiers actually, but he's up 30% in the last seven days. So I think he's probably preparing to move up. Thinks there's demand for his services, maybe getting ready. I don't know, Kresmir, if that's wrong, no idea. But I was just trying to explain why that might be really. Uh, so here's the new guy I've added, Thomas JP. Now, why have I added him? So what does he trade? Uh, let's go, let's look at what I'm copying by him. Amazon, American Express, JP Morgan Chase, Citigroup, MasterCards, are two financial, three financial, four financial companies, five, six. He's really, a, a lot of it is to do with the financial market, sort of global, American, but really global financial um, pfft, gatekeepers really they, they run the infrastructure don't they mastercard and visa and all the rest of it no one else in my portfolio is trading that we have melvin is trading um u.s natural gas commodities he's exposed to energy stocks a lot of them ami cup is again exposed to like petroleum and the raw commodities that go into the energy sector and oil production and energy production. Selesh is uh, Forex, a foreign exchange. So one currency against another one. Marco is the same. He's a uh, foreign exchange, same thing. Uh, fund manager Zek is a lot of sort of Asian companies, China, 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 China. So he's my exposure to the Far East, realistically. He's also got, um, you know, some companies from the States and all the rest of it. And then he's got a little bit of cryptos. So again, it's sort of diversified. Uh, Kresimir, he's all trading the currency pairs as well. So that's uh, Kresimir's thing at the same time. So we haven't really got anyone who's trading these sorts of, of assets and you know, a huge American financial companies. Uh, now, here's the thing. If I look at his uh, stats, I can see that, what can we see? Uh, 11.52 in February. Now, I've just copied him. It might draw down because that's a big gain for February. We'll see. But we can see that we've got till 2019. So we've got one, two, three, four, five years. Four, four years and three months. And they're all in positive. Now, what do I like about this? Because there's a lot of people who trade stocks, right? And normally, I don't copy people who just trade stocks because I'm worried that you know, there's a lot of people on eToro who just buy the stocks and if the stock market's going up, their portfolio is going up and everyone thinks they're a genius. And we've had a lot of years recently in the stock market, or at least since I've been sort of aware of this or watching it, probably watching it since about 2011, 12, just been aware, watching financial news and stuff. That's been a period of really unprecedented only up growth, right? A bull market. It's been like that all the time. With certain years of sort of volatility have come in recently. There's been a lot of people I've seen on eToro who just buy American tech stocks and then just hold it. And it's because the American tech stocks have just done nothing but go up for years, they've looked like geniuses and got a lot of copiers. Now, um, I'm wary of that, all right? Because what if the market goes down? What if corrections happen? We're in difficult times. I don't know what times we're in at the moment. I'm not a market analyst. I'm watching the news, I get all sorts of mixed messages, but I always want to be prepared in case something does go wrong. And I don't want to be copying someone who just, if the market goes down, they go down, therefore my 
copy of them goes down. So I look for people you know, who've done well when the market's going up and when it's going down. And in these years, uh, there have been a year here specifically, this one here, 2022, where the broader market did drop. Now, how do I actually work that out? Well, there's an index, an American index called the S&P 500. And this puts 500 of America's largest companies into a sort of basket, and it measures how they do on average. So I've been looking at the historical data for that. It's really quite interesting. Okay, so here we are. We can see on macro trends, the S&P 500 historical annual returns. Uh, and if we look at the last few years, we can see that 2019, 28.88%. 2020, if you just bought and held the S&P 500, which a lot of people do, because it tracks the overall market. So if you have faith in the American market, just buy the S&P 500. It's like an instrument, an asset. You buy that and just hold on to it. You don't have to buy the 500 individual companies. You buy this sort of one asset and it gives you exposure to the average sort of, I don't know how well um, that the whole market does in America. So if you just held that in 2020, you'd have made 16.26%. How much did he make in 2020? 56.53%. So he beat the S&P 500 in 2020. Let's look at 2021. 2021, you would have made 26.89% just holding the S&P. Uh, here, you would have made 34%. So he beat the S&P 500 that day as well. He's not just, you know, correlated to the market, but he is. The market's up and he's up. Let's see what happens if the market's down. Does he just automatically go you know, take a nosedive. So we'll go to 2022 when the S&P 500 was down 19.44%. So almost 20% down in 2022. What did he do? 2022, he was up 10.4%. That's really, when I was looking at him, that's kind of what convinced me. All right, I'll give it a go. That's what convinced me. Just uncorrelation to the broader markets. So he's made 30% more than the market made that year. This year, broader market was up. He was up. He was up more than it, but he was up. 34, market was up, he was up. This one, the market was down 20%, he was still up 10%, which is, I see as all right. He's got the ability to respond to the market. Is this what he's gonna do in future? I don't know, but my best evidence is looking at what he's done in the past, right? So I see all winning years, even when the market was down, it, it, he must have, because if I look now at his portfolio, wait, let me just show you. Everything's long, right? Which means he's buying, he's buying. So if the market's going up, he's long, he's buying, he'll go up, right? So that 2022 figure must have meant that at some point he either closed everything and just only bought the ones which seemed to be going up against the broader market or he started, you would have seen shorts here and he knew to bet against the market at the right time. It's one of those two. Either he only picked winners and didn't pick all the others, which is talent, or he knew to short it, which is talent. Okay, um, shorting, making money off an asset as the price of it falls is possible to do. So I'm going to go back to him and have a look. So that's what I was really looking at. His non-correlation to the broader markets is best I can see here. And then 31, he made 31% in 2023. The S&P 500 made 24%. So he beat it there as well. Um, I don't know, worth a shot. I, I've looked as best I can. I can see what he's trading. So if I go to his risk scores, I go down, I can see this risk scores four, average five, four, average five. At the moment, he's three, average four, so below five, all right? These are sort of low to medium risk scores, and he's doing that well. His max yearly drawdown, the most he's gone down at any point in the year is 8.24%. So that's really quite incredible. His copy is obviously going up. He's 37.81% so far. Um, in the last seven days, 7,996 uh, copiers. He's probably going to reach his max AUM pretty soon. What's he on? He's on the green star, so you can probably actually take quite a lot of people, uh, copying people, 476 trades, 66.81% profitable, but his average profit is greater than his average loss. Hence, we've got all that winning. Mostly he's winning, and when he does win, he wins more than he loses. That's a recipe for success there. So 98.95% stock, so he's really a mostly stock trader. A little bit of ETFs, but really he's mostly gonna be trading stocks. And things he's frequently traded, Tesla. So there we are, that's not financial. He's traded that a lot. 36 trades, Apple, again, not financial, and Microsoft. So he is also into the sort of American tech stocks, uh, and he's mostly profitable statistically on them. So there we go, 8.35 trades per week, so fairly frequent, average holding time for two months, and there's his uh, profitable weeks and active since. What would you do? Would you copy this guy? Let's look at his chart quickly. Let's see if there's any sort of major dips. I'm gonna go back to uh, last year. Uh, let's go back to last year, and I don't see any evidence of huge drawdowns. Remember, we saw that there was a max, what, 8% drawdown. We don't see huge dips, sudden dips down, sudden losses down. It's a fairly, there's always gonna be ups and downs, but uh, it's, I mean, he's really pulled 
up right here. So huge gains at the moment in, in February. But we'll see. We'll see how he does. What would you do? Would you copy the guy? Um, he's looking He's looking fairly good. We could sort of read what he has to say. He's got his updates. I'll keep reading these. You can have a read of what he has to say in his profile. Always useful to look at his analysis. Does he sound good at it? Someone just pointed him out yesterday. A few people, I'll show you here, who actually pointed this guy out. Thank you very much for your comments, all of you. Uh, it's really nice. There's a couple of other people who have been sort of shown by some of you guys in, in the comments. I'll show you in the watch list. Now, this is the one out of them. This is the one I sort of copied because of that non-correlation. I thought, all right then. But looking at it, let's go a few suggestions. There's these two here. So we've got Dario here and Marco. So I'll have a look at these maybe in the next video and we'll see, you know, would you copy either of these people? Why, why not? Have you got anyone else that you'd like to copy or have a suggestion for? That's it at the moment. So there we are. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. Um, really, I think they're doing well. You know, the other guys who were suggested, those other two I showed you, they were very good, but these guys are already, they're already doing well, you know? Um, so I just thought add more to these guys. Anyhow, we'll see in the next one. I'll have a look at those two guys. Hope you're doing very well. Thank you for all your suggestions and all your lovely comments. Thank you. Bye-bye. God bless.